Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make paint together and it will be green umber. This green umber is a kilo bag from Kramer. It's sourced in Italy and it's just drop dead gorgeous. As some of you may know, I'd like to keep my pigments in glass jars because it's a lot less messy, it's easier for me to see what kind of pigments I'm working with and in a bag it's just one big mess and I am very clumsy so it will get everywhere. So this is me trying to get the green umber into a glass jar. Always wear a mask when you are working with dry pigments. Um, you don't want to breathe in this stuff, it is harmful to your lungs, even if it's just earth pigments. And while I'm struggling to get this knot out of the bag for all you newcomers out here, hi! My name is Izzy, welcome to the channel. I am Izzy from Simply Izzy Design. Um, I'm a Dutch watercolor paint maker and a watercolor artist. And this is my channel. Um, I vlog here, I make paint with me videos and make paint with me videos and this is a make paint with me video. So if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe, it would greatly help out the channel. I finally got the knot out of the bag. Oh, this is great. So I'm going to straight up pour the pigment from the bag into the jar. Last time I did this with black oxide and it went perfect. It went great without any spillage. So let's see what happens here. Nope. See? There you go already. Okay, okay. It wasn't perfect, it wasn't smooth, but I think we did a pretty good job. Now look as I press down on the bag and this whole cloud of pigment shoots out. So this is one of the reasons it's one, very important to wear a mask and two, always do this in a well ventilated area. I'm not telling you to open up a window um, <laughs> because the wind can blow your pigments everywhere. Just make sure you can ventilate your area well. So because this is the first time for me using this pigment, I always make a small batch of paint. I call this a micro batch. And <laughs> these are experimental batches and it allows me to play with the binder to pigment ratio and see how the pigment behaves, how it works on my binder, the opaqueness or the transparency of the pigments and so on and so on. As I'm mixing the pigment with the binder, I feel that the consistency of the paint is rather thin, which is unique for an earth pigment. Usually when I work with earth pigments, they really love binder and they will suck it up and you'll get this thicker paste of paint. But in this case, it stays rather thin. I'm now adding my synthetic ox gall, which is mixed with a bit of Algaf syrup. And what the ox gall does is change the water tension of the water tension, surface tension of the paint, making it flow when you're working wet on wet.
And now that we are finished with the mixing process, I will start the molding process. I usually do experimental paints with my smaller muller because if I use the bigger muller, the paint will have no place to go because it will all be stuck on my muller. Now, with a new pigment that I've never worked before, it's always a question on how long I have to mold. And I think this is a question on all of paint makers have, because the molding time uh, all depends on the kind of pigments you use, where the pigments are coming from, if they're earth pigments, even from what country they are. So there are a lot of factors and therefore there's no standard time in how long you have to mold your pigments. So what I usually do is, after a couple of minutes of mulling, I will check the consistency and flow while I am mulling. Um, you will usually feel when the mulling is very smooth, um, that your paint is ready. So what I do is I take a little sample and paint it on some watercolor paper to see how it behaves, if it's streaky, if it, if it flows nice. Um, if the color is even and how it flows in the gradient and from there I continue mulling or I stop. So when I saw this first sample of paint I thought wow this is gorgeous it's warm it's greenish I love it so I started writing down the pigment color and my recipe that I used for this experiment. But as I was looking at it more, I thought, okay, this is green umber. What happens if I add green oxide? And this is what I love to do. I love experimenting like this. I'm taking an earth color with an oxide color, see what happens and just go with it. And that's the beauty of experimenting with micro batches because you start with a base color and you add more and more and more make sure you write everything down and eventually you will get this amazing color let's watch So as we were mulling, you saw the green umber changing into a bit of a more green tint. And interesting is when you look at my swatch now, the first one, who started off pretty green, dried pretty brown. And now that I added a green oxide, I brought back this greenness that, this greenness, this, this green tint that is naturally occurring in the green umber. It's, it's so pretty. Oh, 
of course I wasn't done yet so I added more green oxide I wanted to make a beautiful natural green with a warm yellow undertone from the green umber oxide naturally granulates and that is usually my goal I love granulating pigments and combining them with beautiful earth pigments makes for such a magical paint so this is basically my usual routine while experimenting I mull, I test, I adjust, I mull again, I test and adjust until either one I find the perfect color I fall in love with, then I usually stop, put the paint in a half pan, let it dry and just have fun with it, paint with it and see what you guys think. Or I adjust it so much that it completely wipes out the base color. <laughs> And after some adjusting and mulling, this is the color where we end up with a deep green, a deep olive green with a warm undertone from the green umber, separation of the oxides, and this is just, I'm so in love with this color. So I take a little half pan and give the color a code um, these are my experimental codes and it helps me keep track of which color is in the pan um, and which it is in my little book So here I'm filling a little half pan with the paint and that is it for our little experiment. In this flat lay you can clearly see where we started and with what color we ended up with. Um, it turned from this beautiful natural umber color to a granulating green color with a beautiful warm base. And this is it. I really hope you guys loved the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!